Optics is big. In the Norwood lab, we use large solar troughs to collect solar energy and turn that into electricity or purify water. Where optics can also be small, in Dr. Su's little sensor lab, a wide range of particle sizes with radii from 2 to 100 nanometers can be detected using ultra-sensitive microtorid optical resonators. Optics is near. We use microscopes to get near objects to look at things that we can't see by eye, like the surface of this 2 on the 2002 written here on this penny in our microscope. In Dr. Ewan McLeod's lab, I work on lens-free microscopes. A lens-free microscope consists of a source and a sample placed very close to the sensor. We place our sample or object very near to the sensor to collect as much light from that object as possible. We then take what we've recorded on our sensor and plug it into the computer and use code to reconstruct our object instead of lenses. Here are images of clusters of 300 nanometer spherical particles. Optics is invisible. Although it may not look like much, we can use wavelengths of light that are invisible to the human eye to do amazing things. In Dr. Barton's lab, I design and build imaging systems that will one day be used to detect ovarian cancer. Optics is old. We can use infrared and x-ray imaging to learn more about the origin of antique artifacts. Working with researchers in the Netherlands, I used imaging to learn the past history and authenticate Renaissance paintings. Optics is hot. Radiological imaging uses small amounts of radioactive material in the body to image gamma rays, which are detected by a special detector in combination with collimation optics to produce functional images of a living body. By working with Dr. Franlid, I took part in making brain imagers which detect Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. Optics is fast. Using extremely short laser pulses, this cool microscope called a multi-photon microscope can diagnose diseases like cancer much faster than traditional microscope techniques. And we have a bunch of them here at the College of Optical Sciences, including in my lab. These lasers use pulses on the order of femtoseconds or 10 to the minus 15 seconds. Optics is far. In my time in the optics department, I've had the opportunity to work on a project that is creating the instrument to study the interstellar medium. I've also had the opportunity to work on another project that is creating a trade study to see which camera will be best to study one of Jupiter's moons, Europa. Optics makes your dreams come true. And let me tell you how optics made my dreams come true. I joined optics because I was obsessed with space. When I was 16, I looked through that telescope and saw the rings of Saturn for the first time and knew that I needed to make space exploration a part of my life. I joined optics specifically because everything we know about space is enabled by optics technology, from telescopes which look up into space to the cameras that go on the rovers and orbiters exploring planets in our solar system. And after getting my degree in optics, I was able to get my dream job. I'm recording this from Los Angeles, where I'm working for NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which, here's the proof, my ID, there's me, and there's NASA. It's, it's an absolutely dream come true, and, and, I, and I share this with you because there isn't one of you watching this that could not achieve your dreams with a degree in optics. The, the College of Optics gives you all of the undergraduate research opportunities, internship opportunities that you would need to follow your dreams. So join optics and make your dreams come true.